Good to have you here. Uh, and I know you've rushed right across town to join us tonight. Where were you earlier? What was going on? Uh, I was actually at the uh, All Blacks Hotel. Um, Which into, is? Into, into, uh, it's the Royal Garden Court. He and did I it. was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can I just quickly say that I feel a bit superior here. I'm not really sporting much of a moustache, am I? I'm not surprised you haven't got one, Austin. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, I was interviewing Dan Carter, obviously, a bit of a milestone for him this weekend with his 100th test. So. Yeah, a little bit, a little exclusive with Dan, ladies. That was quite nice. Yes. So is, he, is, he looking, <laughs> is he looking forward to starting on Saturday? Yes, he is. He oh, is. Nice. <laughs> yes, he is looking forward to starting. I think, uh, you know, mate, he, he did say that it's a it's a huge achievement, but he's pretty much been in the. He's like a really bad like cricketer who's super nervous in the 90s. He's been in the 90s for nearly two years. It's taken him that long with injuries to get up to the hundreds, so he's been waiting for it for quite a while. What, what's the what's the whole uh, mood there at the moment? Because we, we like to think they want revenge over England, and it's going to be pretty fiery. How do you think it's going to go? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think they're they're very focused. Um, this was a very good England side that put them away last year, and and uh, it cost them not only a, a world record, but also you know there was there was a rough old summer when you when you lose your last Test match of the year. It's not not a great summer. They're rocking the back on the beach, so. You know, they're determined to win, um, but uh, they know that they're going to be facing a real challenge here, so they're looking forward to it. Uh, let's talk Premiership, shall we? Because obviously you played at Leeds Tykes, you played with Saris as well, but there have been so many Kiwis, so many All Blacks who played in the Premiership over the years. We couldn't list them all, but here's some of the highlights and just some absolutely brilliant names there. Lads, which names really stand out for you? You go first there, Justin. Who stands out for you there? Uh, for me, um, Josh Cronfeld, who's, who's actually in the picture there. I, I forgot that he, um, he, he spent a bit of time over here. He was an excellent loose forward, and he didn't get a lot of really sort of kudos for how good he was because we've had such a plethora of great uh, sevens in our country. For me, uh, for me I mean, Aaron Major uh, and Daryl Gibson, the two, two uh, second five outs, as, as, as they probably call them, back, ho back home. But the, they came in and, and sort of the way that they took the pressure off the, the Leicester Tens and they ran the game there was, was very impressive. Nick Evans for me, longevity, didn't come at the end of his career for a bit of cash, came because he wanted to come and play rugby and stayed and he's been a massive asset for Harlequins and arguably at the expense of caps for himself for the All Blacks. And what about, what's the view in New Zealand? Because we think that he sacrificed a place in the World Cup. He hasn't got that World Cup winner's medal because he stayed at the Harlequins. Do the guys in New Zealand think that he would have taken to the field? Yeah, I, I, there's no doubt he would have, the way that it transpired with, uh, you know, Stephen Donald having, having to come from whitebaiting on the river. So we were starting to get quite de desperate. And there's, there's no doubt, I think, the way that... I think Nick became a better player. I think you do learn a lot by, by moving and, and possibly being in a different environment, I think. He learnt a lot by his, his time at Quinns, and he's actually a better player than he was when he left New Zealand, so they would have welcomed him back. But I'm f for sure he would have been in that squad, probably would have played in the final, as it turns out. Can we ask you to switch sides for a moment? Absolutely. Um, I've become an England fan, yep. just for a second. How do England beat the All Blacks? Uh, watch the French game. Uh, have, a, have a look at what the French did at the weekend. They, they, they had a first five uh, who, who took... No, number 10, I should say. First of all, my language from New Zealand, people might not know what I'm saying. But they, they had a player wanting to take the advantage line on uh, and, and around an area which held the All Blacks defenders from drifting. Uh, if, if, uh, the, the defence is very good, but they, they made inroads in and around the ruck, uh, got over the advantage line and did it with some, some impact and some power. So they didn't string it together, but there's aspects in that game that really put the All Blacks defence under stress. So, you know, they need to, I think, target that and, and, and try and... If they have a first five, Owen Farrell played, I reckon, his best, one of his best test matches he's ever played last year against the All Blacks because he took the ball to the line. In, in the first 15 minutes, he, he kicked it away a bit, but then he thought, you know what, bugger this, I'm going to go at this All Black defensive line, and that freed up the space for Tuolagi and co. So, yeah, have a look at that game and see what the French did. Well, okay. the, crowd, the crowd are going to be buzzing with excitement if, if he can do that. And that yep. last minute, we understood the New Zealand vernacular when you said, bugger this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but there, there'll, be, there'll be a lot of people who turn up at Twickenham, it'll be their first game, they're not entirely sure what to have. And sometimes we can gloss over the hacker. Those of us who've seen it, those of us who've faced it, it's just there, we like it. But what is it from within a Kiwi player that makes the hacker so special? Oh, well, the first thing is when you were on the opposite uh, side to, to us having to do the haka, you always target someone uh, like Austin. But um, <laughs> you pick certainly on, don't. Pick on you, the best player. You, you, it's always you, the way you got to you target the best player. You do not. You do not target giants. So I wouldn't have been looking at you. That's for sure. But look, look. You know what? The the, the, the haka to me, I think this here epitomises what um, is kind of missing from it. I love the confrontation, and as a player, you responded to that. I was, I was captain and. 
97 at Old Trafford when, uh, when Cockrell and Norm Hewitt were face to face. And I think that's what, from there on, separated the Haka too far. Like, the team's so far away now. I loved what the French did last year. Uh, I mean, two years ago at the World Cup. I they love what the Welsh... They got yeah, fined for that. Fined. I love what the Welsh did. Like, the, the opposition team now are 20, 20 metres away from the, the Haka. It's hard to even see the look in their eyes. So, um, you know, the, to us... That was, that was a more of a mark of a respect, that they were there, you could see, you see the white in their eyes and uh, they were ready to take you on. Is it, does it feel good to face, boys, just quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly as uh, your first game in front of it, you really look forward, as a, as a fan, first time you see it. After that, you try and sort of put, put it into the back of your mind during the week. I mean, I always used to stand next to the big, tall, white guys who probably didn't look right doing the hacker, but actually the, bi the big thing that Clive Woodward always did was take your tracksuits off afterwards, take loads of time and try and kill that sting.